And welcome into episode 72 of the Bama Geeks podcast. Hello, hello, hello. 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 Hello, world. Hello. What a wonderful word. Hello. As they like to do in programming that? classes, whenever the first thing that you make is you echo out hello, world, in your programming module, and you do anything. So, hello, world. <laughs> <laughs> No, did y'all ever did y'all ever see that obscure movie that Dudley Moore was in? What was the name of it? And he was like an advertising executive and he got placed into the nut house. And he had to like he convinced all the people in the in the nut house. Is that, is that proper? Am I saying that proper these days? Probably not. I'm but so sorry. Mental health facility. <laughs> I'm, I'm was, sorry. Was it a movie called Crazy People? Yes. Yes. Okay. The movie's called Crazy People. Well, I mean, to be fair, I've got my I've got my my search engine set to Duck, Duck, Go currently, and I literally I didn't know what Jess was talking about, so I put in Dudley Moore Nut House movie, <laughs> <laughs> and it shows up Crazy People. So I was like, that's why I was like, is it crazy not, people, Jess? I can promise you that I'm not trying to be. Uh, Sorry. But no. Doug Doug knows what you're talking about at the very least. (laughs) So we're good. There. (laughs) All right. We're off. And we're we're off and running. (laughs) Oh, God. I'm going to get it. I'm going to be the one to get us canceled. Uh We're going to be me. Oh, I don't think that would be bought in the nut house. Oh, Bo. oh man, did I? Bo is uh, Bo completely blipped out during that. Oh, yeah. great. Bo's, oh, Bo's been having it. internet issues. <laughs> and so... Okay, so what I was what I was gonna get at though when we were when you were saying the hello and you were doing the introductions and everything. Mm-hmm. So a guy named David Pamer is in this movie, and he's been in like a lot of like he's a little character actor. If you look him up, you know that you've seen him in several different things but he has this thing where he says hello a lot like he can't speak a sentence without saying the word hello so then he comes up with a little song that's hello 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 what a wonderful word hello so every time people say hello i always think about that movie (sighs) about the mental health facility yes it's called crazy people Dudley Crazy Moore, Daryl Hannah's in it. Paul Reisner's in it. It's just one of these little weird, you know, obscure movies from the from the eighties that just happens to pop into my brain every now and then. Music by Cliff Eidelman. Nice. Hmm. But what he does is like he gets them. He he was an ad executive, and then he like all of a sudden it's like these people in the mental health facility. They're like writing better ads for stuff and they're being honest in their ads and they're actually writing better ads than the ad executives do. So they start becoming Mm -hmm. like, you know, people want them to write ads for them. It's, it's, I haven't seen it in years, but it's a good little movie. So I I would recommend checking that out. Okay. That's what happens when they get the medications right at the facility, right? (laughs) What? Uh, <laughs> they're, like, they're, they're, they're leveled out and they're, you know, they're, yeah. they're, being, per, they're being productive. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll leave it alone. Okay. okay. <laughs> are you, are you okay with me? Are you fine with me? I'm totally fine. Okay. I just hope everybody else listening is too. Okay. We're, 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 so. we're, we're skirting the line tonight, Brock. I am so sorry, buddy. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'm Brock Parker. That's my wife, Jess. Hi. Hello. Email bamageeks at gmail.com if you'd like to take her to task for anything she has just said. And if, you, if it's anything that I said, then just don't even email because we're going to read it anyway. It's fine. Yeah. We'll forward it to him, but it'll go to his yeah. trash. That's right. So <laughs> that's Kevin Gardner. That's Bo Bearden. <laughs> we're, we're, tonight, Bo is also played by the part of Max Headroom. So uh, I yeah. just realized I think our squares are off. Are, are our they? squares off? I thought, isn't Bo usually on the other side? Uh, who knows? I still want to include my conditions, probably. That's just yeah. that's fine. Who so, knows? <laughs> so we're 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 gonna you know I'll I'll, I'll relieve Brock of this. We're gonna we're gonna do things a little bit different tonight, guys. Um, you know, uh, two uh, well three of the four of us 
um, are running into some issues with uh, energy levels a little bit today um, because we've we've had a lot of traveling we've been working on and we'll tell you sure we'll tell you guys some more about that um, and then of course Bo is 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 cosplaying Max Hedrum tonight. Um, we told him you know this was probably the night to do it so this is when he's going to be doing it. Um, yeah, with his connection and everything. So. Yeah, and he he has been diligently working on trying to get his internet uh, stable. Yeah. And it was it mm-hmm. was good during the Patreon episode just yeah. before this, and then right before we came to the main episode. Well, you know, yeah, there he goes. Yeah. So we're we're going to be doing things a little bit different tonight. We're going to be uh, regaling you guys about. You know, I think we've had a lot of stuff going on, and we just kind of want to share it with you guys. Um, just kind of give you some updates and. Um, uh, as we kind of shared with our um, Patreon, we've got some really cool things coming down the pipe. So um, we'll be we'll be looking forward to being able to announce that stuff here coming pretty soon. So, yep. So how we want to do this, Brock? Well, we're not going to do a roundabout of what we've been up to because that's kind of the episode tonight. Yeah. Um. So I, I guess we can start off. Jess, do you have your southern word and phrase ready? Yeah. Sure. Let's do this. All right. Let's. Let's bring Jess to the forefront here. So we said a little bit different. Hi. Hello. I'm fatigued. I'm so sorry. So I might just be more a little more just out there than I normally am. So well, she might be crazy. She I, broke out of the nut house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. And we don't mean priesters pecans. Oh <laughs> chocolate covered pecans. Anyway. <clears throat> Back to uh, back to our southern phrase for this episode. Um, I, I had this picked out last week, and y'all threw me off when I made the comment about the guy getting stuck in the vase. And I said, "Well, you should just butter him up and slide him right out." Mm-hmm. Y'all felt like that was the perfect um, southern word and phrase for that episode. So mm-hmm. let me go back to what I originally had uh, had set aside. Um, <clears throat> so the phrase I have picked out is, "Aren't you precious?" Is that kind of like bless your heart? It is a, it's a, it's sort of like another, uh, yeah, offshoot of bless your heart. Okay. So, you know, although this sounds like a question, it's merely a statement to compliment something cute or sweet. It's usually intended as an interjection and generally in reference to a child's outfit or behavior. But in the South, be aware if you hear someone saying, well, aren't you precious? It's probably being said sarcastically. Mm-hmm. It, it's a phrase usually said if someone has said or done something that you find insulting or stupid. So mm-hmm. Since your mama taught mm-hmm. you that if you can't say something nice, then don't say nothing at all. You kill them with kindness. Someone offended you? Well, aren't they just precious? <laughs> and I've also heard it with, well, ain't you precious? Yeah. You know, using using our ain't. Well, that ain't you just precious. So it's another it's another way of saying bless your heart. Okay. Yeah. Well, very good. All right. Well, Kevin, how about you, man? You ready for your uh, your dad joke? Yeah, I went through and uh, I think I found I found you know you can always see whenever I'm going through dad jokes because I'll go through like a whole line of them and then when I start chuckling at one, I'm like that's the one I'm gonna do because that's the one that made me laugh. So I'm kind of hoping this can makes you guys laugh tonight. So if you, okay. you guys ready? Yeah. Ready? So a burglar stole all, all the lamps in my house. I know I should be more upset, but I'm absolutely delighted. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's a good one. (laughs) Oh, man. All right. I'll be here all night. Or at least until I pass out. (laughs) (laughs) Very good. Very good. So that's the only one tonight? That's it. That's it. All right. That's all he's got the energy for. That's it. All right. Um, for those of you who like to duck out during our intro on the YouTube videos, and that segment usually comes a little bit later. That's what you miss. So mm-hmm. if you click off and don't watch anymore, sometimes I can't blame you, but at the other times, that's what you miss. Good Maybe Southern is, fun. Maybe this could be <laughs> an eye-opening experience. Get them to see what they've been missing. That's right. That's right. So. Uh, I guess before we get into to everything else, you know where to find us at Bama Geeks on Instagram, X, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. Did I say Facebook or the Xbox? What Fa- did I say? You said Facebook. 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 Close. I'm, my mind's on video games. I was thinking of Xbox. So 
But you can also find us on Facebook in our private community, the Bama Geeks Front Porch, where we sit and shoot the breeze. Our friend uh, Jamie in there today showed off her trip to Bucky's. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's where we can just share all kinds of fun, fun stuff. So Bama Geeks Front Porch on Facebook, just ask to join and we'll let you in there. And uh, if you want to spend uh, some extra time with us before each regular episode, patreon.com slash Bama Geeks. That's where we spend uh, a little bit of time uh, with our Patreon members. And we appreciate their support. And we also appreciate you for listening. Also, I got a video from a friend, friend of the podcast, uh, Ryan Dole, who shared with me that uh, Oscar has visited a Bucky's. On the uh, recommendation of EO Sky, by the way, if you don't know who Oscar is and you're not in the professional wrestling world, I do apologize, but she is a wrestler with the WWE. She did post a reel to her Instagram of her visiting a Bucky's and Brock and I think that that's possibly the one in Auburn because um, they she, were. She, she posted yeah. it yesterday. Mm -hmm. Tonight is Sunday in case you're yeah. wondering what we're referencing yeah. uh friday night they were uh wwe was in atlanta for smackdown and on saturday they were in montgomery for a house show mm -hmm. and in between in between smackdown and the house show she posted a video of going into bucky's mm -hmm. and the only one that's on i-85 between atlanta and montgomery is in auburn yeah so that's what we have uh what we think we don't know that for sure. We're just making an assumption. So I'm I'm gonna say probably a hundred percent assumption. <laughs> so if you were in the Auburn Buckies and got to see Asuka, yeah. let us know. Let us know. Did you spot her? <laughs> and if you need to know who Asuka is, just Google I, I, that. I can see it now. Someone needs a shirt that has the splattered where like she sprayed him with mist and said, you know, I met Asuka at Buckies and all <laughs> <laughs> It's barbecue sauce. Barbecue she's, sauce. She's, yeah, yeah she used barbecue sauce for her mist. Yeah. That's awful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very nice. Oh, well, that's gonna be part of what we talk about because uh Jess and I took my kids to uh to the uh house show. But before that, last weekend, uh, this past week in Alabama has been uh, probably like a lot of you, uh, very cold. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, How's everyone doing? You thawing out? Yeah. All right? Is everybody, everybody good? <laughs> yeah. By the time it, this it, airs. Yeah. Huh? It's, it's bad enough for me that I, I ran away to Florida. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Uh, and when this airs, uh, when this, uh, gets uploaded on Wednesday, uh, we should be back in the sixties. Yeah. Uh, we've been below freezing Groovy. four days of this past week. So that's not something that uh, is usual for, for Alabama. Well, you know, and I realized this too, that thinking about we've had right before the snow and the ice, like Huntsville got tornadoes. And yep. so we had the yeah. tornadoes, mm -hmm. we had the, you know, the, the trifecta mm -hmm. of Alabama weather in this last week so well, and, I, and i realize a lot of our you know northern folks are probably like oh four days of free below freezing that's so sweet but that would be kind of like you guys getting hurricanes you know yeah. like this is something we get a lot of and we don't get you know below freezing temperatures incredibly often but when we do it causes havoc here because you know mm -hmm. it freezes the roadways and and you know we we don't know how to drive on that you know you know, it, nice. it, it, one, one of the one of the things that i, I found kind of funny about this was just the way that our state responds to ice is very different from, let's say, Tennessee, because a lot of, uh, you know, when, when all this, this iced up stuff happened, um, you know, we Tennessee got it a lot worse well, with this, this big mm -hmm. ice storm than we did. Yeah. But they actually recovered. Like if you if you compared like a, across the Tennessee line versus like Florence, for example, or Muscle Shoals or something like that, um, uh, they were they, they had the equipment there and then they know how to actually take care of the yeah. roads. Whereas we don't as much here. So it's kind of like, can you just, you know, teach us, help <laughs> us out the, what we need to do to, so to handle this kind of weather better, because, you know, I mean, weather, tornadoes, hurricanes, frost, whatever, it doesn't know state lines, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just going to, it's going to do whatever it's going to do as far mm -hmm. down as it's going to go, you know? So yeah. 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 What well, are those kind of funny? 
One of those weird moments of reflection I have whenever we get cold. It's one of those things I realize I've seen more icicles the last couple of days than I ever see normally. It's weird. One of those mm -hmm. weird staples of winter. You don't mm -hmm. see like, like I'm driving, I was driving to work one morning. It's like, oh, cool. That car's got a bunch of icicles on it. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me yeah. revel in this because this is something I don't see that often, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Those insignificant little things I'm amused by. So mm -hmm. I got, yeah. um, I got, I got some really cool video. My, uh, my younger dog. Um, she likes eating ice cubes. You know, I don't know if you ever had a dog that likes eating ice cubes. Um, but she's she has this whole thing about wanting to eat ice cubes. So I was like, I wonder how what she would do with icicles. So we had her outside, and I was just pulling icicles off of like a lean to that I have on the side of the house, and was just handing them to her. And she's like, That's ice. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> <laughs> didn't half, then it like breaks <laughs> apart. And she's like, Wait a minute. <laughs> part of it fell down and so she's like <laughs> rooting around on the ground trying to get all of it it was it was super cute <laughs> nice yeah. it's been some adventures it's been mostly cold though right guys it's been yeah, yeah. it's crazy yeah uh, poor jess got out of the house um on tuesday yeah it was yeah. tuesday of last week uh we were all off from work well i mean we were working from home basically yeah yeah but she had to go outside to get something. She hadn't been outside, you know, in a couple of days and our steps were still iced over, but thankfully she was, she was holding the handrail. I'm laying on the couch. She goes outside to, to do something. And all of a sudden I hear just boom, boom on the, on the steps outside. And I okay. jumped up and she's standing up and she's like, it's just my pride. Yeah. It was just my pride. <laughs> Cause your, your steps are concrete. Yes, yeah. they are. Yeah. So oh, I just I just man. happened to forget about the whole ice thing and I was just Oof. going down the steps as I normally would and she busted Oof. it. Yeah, it did yeah. So I'm okay though. I'm I'm serious, I'm fine. Yeah. I just I'm glad nobody saw me and I'm glad we don't have a ring camera. Because you know that would have probably, you know, would have been the one to send old James Spann. Because I was just earlier in the day, I had just seen a video about a lady doing the exact same thing going out for a porch and she <laughs> she busted a lot harder than i did so yeah but uh one thing i uh, one thing we were talking about you know just in patreon and we brought up that if you have one of those red parkas that you bought for your ghostbusters <laughs> costume your timu yeah it uh it i broke that thing out i'm i've made made use of it yeah, during we, this weather we never thought we would in alabama it was like ah, it's always too hot here for the parkas <laughs> it was perfect last week yeah and they the will parkers they, and parkas yeah parkers and the parkas and <laughs> they do their job wonderfully i can uh, i can uh definitely attest to that thumbs up timu yeah thank you timu <laughs> So, well, the, uh, the weather was playing havoc with deliveries last week, uh, you know, cause mm -hmm. mail systems and UPS and our beloved FedEx, they like, couldn't get through to make deliveries. So I got something that was a couple of days delayed and it's something that I've been waiting on since October when I, I sent this off. Um, y'all know I'm a sucker for autographs and I finally got the grail on i've been trying to get this this um this print oh nice you finally got it i've, I've been trying to get this <laughs> oh, i can't really there we go <laughs> it's a, if you can't see it if you're on audio apologize this is a batman arkham city uh print signed by kevin conroy uh who was batman uh in of course the uh the animated series but kevin conroy and then uh gray delisle uh catwoman we met her uh last year and got her to sign it and then uh troy baker who was uh two-face and and tim drake uh in the game and then nolan north who was you know the penguin and uh wally weingert which we have mentioned to our trip mm -hmm. to chattanooga comic-con last year mm -hmm. so i only needed tara strong who was coming to huntsville in april so i'm going to get her on it maurice lamarche who Basically comes to Dragon Con every year. Hopefully, I'm going to get him on it this year. Mm -hmm. But then this guy, the Joker that everybody mm -hmm. knows, Mark Hamill. Mm -hmm. I said this piece will never be completed because Mark Hamill doesn't do signings. But doggone it, he did uh, <laughs> at San Francisco uh, in, uh, at Fan Expo. And look at that right there. Uh, nice. Uh, big big credit and shout out to a company called Official Picks. 
uh, who are, they're good friends with Mark and they arranged a private signing with him mm-hmm. and I uh, got him nice. right there for the Joker. I, w- I wonder if he saw the, uh, the nice post-it that Wally sent him. Uh-huh. Well, the post-it was over here, uh, over here that Wally had sent to him and it's gone. So I'm assuming he saw it. Yeah. So, but yeah. Uh, Could you and, imagine and, if and you Wally's going to be in Huntsville too. If you had opened up that package and not only was his signature there, but if he had had some type of return post-it note, that, that would have been awesome. funny. I would have taken it right to Wally in, in <laughs> April. <laughs> but yeah, there it is. Mark Hamill right there. That That is a grail. I never thought I would have him on this print, so I'm nice. stoked. Rock so. has managed to grab two sought-after autographs. Is Keaton. You're Keaton oh, yeah. one, and then you Mark Hamill. So. <laughs> You've done pretty well for yourself getting those autographs. Yeah. And I'm waiting on one from uh, Mary Steen, Steen Virgin. Mm-hmm. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> it's a dual signed photo of her and, and Christopher Lloyd. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, they just finished their signing with her. And I think well, they've got one with uh, Chris coming up. So, but it'll be Clara and Doc. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, I'm waiting on a couple more. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say what it is. Mm-hmm. I'll just, I'll let that lie. That's a tease. Mm-hmm. It's a big one. Mm-hmm. one. One of them is, one of them is huge that I know Bo will probably go nuts over. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll tease that one. It's on the way. Okay. So when it gets here, it should be here hopefully by next episode and I can show it to you. Okay. But uh, that was not the only mail call. Um, and speaking of Ghostbusters, you know how much we all love them. Um, and speaking of cold, yeah, speaking of cold, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Frozen <laughs> Empire, uh, they're introducing you know a lot of new gear and everything else into the Ghostbusters uh arsenals. And the Motorola MT500 radio was the very first Ghostbusters prop that I built, put a soundboard in, um, soldered, and everything else. It's got all the scenes from the movies, you know, with Vinkman and Ray. Uh, talking over it and Egon um, from the, uh, the hotel scene at the beginning where they're trying to capture Slimer for the first time. And uh, those big radios that you see those guys using, that's, that's been the staple mm-hmm. uh, in frozen empire because everything is getting updated. They also updated the radios. It would make sense that the radios get smaller because much yeah. the same for cell phones. You had the brick in the eighties, the big, honking brick cell phone mm-hmm. and now you know things are smaller things are more compact so i'm kind of surprised they still use part. radios i mean that's i mean i know that's like a first responder thing but you know mm-hmm. everything has kind of gone beyond radios at this point yeah um, but well, i mean it still looks cool to have one though you know mm-hmm. and the fact that it's and this is a it's a i don't know how to pronounce this, is it baofeng b-a-o-f-e-n-g but the model number is UV-5R, and it's got the extended batteries on it. Um, you know, you take the battery off here, and if it's, if it's got a standard battery, then, you know, the radio is a little bit shorter. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it's got the extended battery. But uh, Austin Young, friend of the podcast, uh, is, is really, really good about identifying um, props from the movies and he pointed this out and i grabbed a link from him and we have two of these um they've got yellow and white tape depending on which ghostbusters use you know which which radio what whichever ghostbusters using mm-hmm. and they've got them wrapped around the antenna and the the bottom but um yeah so i don't know how we're going to customize that but we will there are two of them uh if you go searching out for these these are available on amazon for really decent prices um, again, Baofeng, B-A-O-F-E-N-G, mm-hmm. U-V-5-R. Um, these are actual ham radios. <laughs> you do need a license to operate these. Yeah. Um, some of the frequencies that you, that you can use for this, uh, you just need a technician license from the FCC, I believe, for ham radio. Something like that. Anyway, look up your info and don't use these without i think there's some frequencies you can use without a license but technician license from what i understand is far less complicated to uh to get so yeah just a forewarning that's our disclaimer if you get one of these <laughs> but these are the radios from the, the new ghostbusters screen accurate radios mm-hmm. so yeah. i mean you can 
channel mode. Ooh. I'm going to turn that off. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, you don't have a license. Ooh, I didn't hit the I didn't hit the push to talk button. <laughs> but I, I would imagine, you know, with yeah, you can do cell phones and stuff like that. But these, you know, just use regular uh, the airwaves. They don't need cell signals or anything like that. So yeah, I guess it, I mean, if, there'd if be New, good in, in an emergency. Yeah, situation. if New York freezes and you need to, you know, radio. I mean. It might be affecting the cell towers. You just I'm sure it's also for the aesthetic of the equipment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Well, they're cool and they come in you can get them in two packs. So I've got one, Jess has one. Mm -hmm. And we'll probably spring for the license. Some of the best stuff you can get out of China. Yeah. Hey. And they look really cool. <laughs> I'm surprised with it being Sony there wasn't some form of Sony radio. <laughs> yeah, this is the Sony Ericsson. <laughs> 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 yeah. But those are those are really cool. And uh, I guess just real quick, too, while we're on the topic of uh, Frozen Empire, uh, the the Empire magazine drop that has yep. come out that uh, oh, everyone's yeah. been sharing and a lot of a lot of great photos coming out of that. Uh, I know everybody has been buzzing about Janine in the flight suit right on. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Janine is suiting up. And uh, from what I understand that this is. She's going to have a really, she's going to have a significant part with this. So yeah. props to Janine and, and Annie Potts. Yay, Annie Potts. And the Ghostbusters research and development team that's being introduced mm -hmm. uh, with the gear, the Ghostbusters gear patch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, black flight suits. Bo, you and I have been doing <laughs> black flight suits for how many years now? Uh, about, oh, about 10, 12. No, longer, than, longer that. than that. Yeah. Probably about 15 years. Oh, yeah. you're right. Yeah. So. We're now after 15 years, Canon. I need to find that flight suit then. Yeah. <laughs> <back. laughs> <laughs> oh, me. But yeah, looking forward to uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. That's coming out here in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. And uh, things are going to start ramping up on that. And so looking forward to all the marketing stuff that's going to. And the release take date place. Was, is, has been moved up as yep. most people. March 22nd. Most of y'all know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a love hate relationship because it was originally going to be off the weekend. I was off. Now I'm going to have to pull like we did for afterlife and <laughs> did the midnight screening for Thursday. Of uh, course. We'll save you a seat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and I, I love how midnight screenings was like, yeah, it's the midnight screening. It's, it's like, like 7 10. PM. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like the first, the first show is like 7 PM, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Midnight. Yeah, we, it's like, it's like they, they, they've adapted to like, you know, us folks, it's like, I, I got to be in bed by 10 or else I hurt. <laughs> I think, you know? it, it, I wonder if it might be more for them that they have to pay the workers more. It falls into extra overtime. That might Could be. Like, it's true. Maybe. Could be. Um, and well, as as, okay. So, so there is a, and a great, I'd have to look this up guys, but there's a very old law that's in effect, a federal law that basically exempts theaters from, from more complex overtime rules. Um, Hmm. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, well, we do know somebody in theater management, so maybe we could pose that question to a friend of our podcast that that is <laughs> that, oh, yeah. that manages a movie theater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. I'm sorry, I'm pulling something up here. Oh, he's going to share. Um, yeah, so we don't we don't as far as you know the four of us members are, are are members of the alabama ghostbusters we don't know yet we haven't been invited to any premieres screenings or whatever hopefully we we might um so if you're a theater manager and can and wants to uh, involve the alabama ghostbusters we're really easy to reach especially with our new website yes hey, there. Let, hey yeah. All let me right. see if i can there we go there's there it is this is uh the brand new uh alabama gb.com this is a site we just launched this past week kevin and i've been working on this and uh you can you can find us all there you can meet the team look and this is not all our members we've got a lot of members on here uh, as you mm -hmm. can see we do not have everybody on there uh I don't have pictures of everybody. I didn't want to just grab pictures of everybody and just post them because they may not like them. <laughs> so I, I gave everybody a chance to say, Hey, send me the pictures you want to use. And, and hopefully uh, some more people will be at 
happening. But we got a lot more members than this. Mm -hmm. A lot more members. But oh, yeah. these are all good people, good folks. But we've got an events page where we will showcase um showcase our events. And so if you if you'd like to have the Alabama Ghostbusters out for events, then just hit that contact button and you're gonna see baby Brock and Baby Bo. Yes, the early days. There. <laughs> this the was early, 2010. Early wow. Wow. Love... Look at them young faces there. Yeah. I, was, I I chose this picture though for the site because these uh kind girls down in Auburn yeah. were, did the, the who you gonna call pose and pointed to us. Mm -hmm. And I thought, like, hey, well, you know what? Contact form. <laughs> so uh, just hit that contact form and it'll shoot us an email uh for the Alabama Ghostbusters, and you can uh you can have us out for your uh movie premieres or any other event. We do charities, we do uh cons we do community events it doesn't matter just have us out alabamagb.com that's where you can get us so uh anything else ghostbusters related mm -mm. yeah yeah we got a lot of friends who who cover ghostbusters more extensively than we do and they're going to be coming out with some stuff over at uh YHS podcast. Yes, have some podcasts. Look those guys up. They got uh, really cool things. Mm -hmm. um, they did get to go to London while Frozen Empire was filming. And so they've got some fun behind the scenes stuff that they're going to be able to share uh, leading up to the movie. So, yeah. uh, yes, have some podcast, YHS podcast. Craig and Abby and Jake, um, they're, they're going to have some good stuff. So go check them out. So, uh, as far as, was, was there anything else? Oh, oh, uh, before I forget, we were, and I just thought this was a, a fun story. We were taking the kids home. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm curious about this. So. Yeah. I hadn't even told Jess the story. Um, I just told her we, we were listening to, uh, was it Casey's top 40? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we were driving through downtown Birmingham and captain and Tennille came on that, but do it to me one more time. Is that the song? Yeah. Okay. Do that to me one more time. Do that to me one more time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> look. Look, I look, I'm, I started the episode off with the bang. So we're on you the know, edge, guys. It. We are on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> so mm. Captain and Tennille, which was it Captain that went to Auburn? No. No, Tennille. Tennille. Tony Tennille. Tony Tennille. Tony get it right, man. He is an Alabama native. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, she went to Auburn. Um, so anyway. We're driving, and that song came on, and I was instantly transported back to the fifth grade. Um, <laughs> you're probably wondering, what does that song have to do with the fifth grade, 1987? Oh. Farley Nuclear Power Plant, which is down around Dothan. Um, we were taking a field trip with my class to the power plant, and we all got into the room. They were going to teach us, you know, how the nuclear plant worked and all this other stuff. And, um, we're sitting there and they're like, okay, so here's a quick little video. Uh, you know, the break out the 35 millimeter projector cause it's 1987. Uh, no, we had VCRs back then. They probably wheeled out a big VCR. I don't know. Anyway. So we're all sitting there watching and then they decided to have like a little trivia contest and the winner got a, a t-shirt said Farley nuclear power plant on it and had a picture of a, how are you okay? What are you hearing? A siren. Oh, that's the power plant going off. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> we're, we're in meltdown. Um, <laughs> Homer, somebody wake up Homer. Yeah. <laughs> so you got a t-shirt with a picture of like the, the power plant stacks, the smoke stacks on it. And mm. it's a Farley nuclear plant. And um, those aren't smoke stacks. <laughs> well, moisture stack what are they? If, if 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 a nuclear power plant's smoking you need to get away <laughs> they don't smoke that's steam steam you okay. get important smoke stacks say, from a coal plant that's important true. safety <laughs> tip thanks <Econ>. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway so i won the trivia contest and got one of the t-shirts and so they uh they said well come up and meet our robot they had they had like this robot with a giant you know, kind of like the the Tommy robots that they had, the little bartender type robots they had. Yeah. Back in the eighties, you could play with. Anyway, it's like a giant sized one of those, and they had the lights for the mm -hmm. eyes, and the, the mouth was you know, light bulbs and would move as it talked. And 
So when I got up there to get my T-shirt, the robot turned his head to me and said, what is your name? I said, my name is Brock. Well, Brock, congratulations on winning. Hey, I have an itch. Can you can you please scratch my head? <laughs> oh, no. And I said, OK, he said, just scratch the top of my head. And so when I reached up to scratch the top of the robot said and it started playing, do that to me one more time. Oh, my. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Uh, and the whole room busted out laughing. Of course, I turned three shades of red. Oh, wow. I'm like, I don't what it means, you know. Oh, OK. So, that's so is this on. robot like the robot in Rocky four? I was about to say, yeah, like Polly's robot five. Was it five? Wait, golly, I don't remember what this robot what was looks like. I thought it was four. Mm, five's the one with the street fight, and he's got. Well, yeah, it might be four. You're right, it is four. I always get four and five. That, yeah, you're right, four. Correction. Rocky four. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't. You remember know what I'm talking that. about, though. Yeah, that, that no, really I tall, don't. insectoid-looking robot. Yeah. Okay. No, but I'm it's looking that robot. up. Yes. Yeah, if when you find it, just share it. Because yeah, it was the one. Now. It was the one that 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 is Polly's robot. It's just the mm. one that no, they get Polly. It's, it's his son's robot. I thought. Hang on, hang on. It's been a while since I've watched Rocky Four. Hmm. Uh, sorry for the dead air. Jess is searching for this. I'm, robot. I'm wanna... sorry. I'm. Yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. We're we're. Uh, but, I'm now curious. I, I was I was trying to figure out where Captain and Tennille was going to tie into this story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so was I. But I will tell you though, you, you talk about watching uh, off a, a thirty-five millimeter. I do remember my my library, uh, my school library. We, there was a couple of times I had, like, a, a movie Friday, and we went and watched the movie on thirty-five millimeter. I got it. The, so yeah, yeah. that was this was the early nineties. So mm-hmm. my dad was the public information officer for the Alabama State Troopers down in Dothan, and he would always bring home a thirty-five millimeter projector and a screen, and had you know, the old goofy cartoons oh. that where he's driving, being a road hog and everything. Uh, let's see. Is this? Yes. Yeah, that's no. It. Yep. No, it's it. It was. Okay. It wasn't just like that, but it had this a similar like oval head uh, with a shorter neck and a, just like a square body. Yeah. Okay. You know, coming from Johnny five and short circuit, this, this, this robot was terrifying to me. Yes. Yeah. That was a big Rocky. <laughs> this robot was terrifying because we had Johnny Five and then we had this, and it was like, where did they go wrong with this? This is that's like a that's like if you took Johnny Five and crossed him with the robot that they used. Um, Wait, you you remember the you remember the the robot that you could get for the Nintendo, the one yeah, where you would, you push his hands down? Yeah, mm-hmm. it was like they they crossed that one with Johnny Five, and that's what we got was that big <laughs> robot. I never even knew there was a robot involved in any Rocky movie. I didn't either. Honestly, I couldn't remember. It's very forgetful. Ever. Yeah. Because you're like, okay, they're trying to promote some new toy that's out. And I don't think that thing ever really got released or anything. It's just like they just wanted to show a rope. Sylvester Stallone I, I, was, was yeah, directing I think, it. So. Yeah. <laughs> well. That's, yeah, that's, that's all we got to know. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks to Captain and to Neil for uh, <laughs> teaching us about robots. <laughs> right, we went from Captain and to Neil to Rocky. <laughs> but it was wow. kind of a straightforward path. <laughs> kind of. This is this is just like the potluck we had today at, at, at for lunch. There's a bit of everything in this episode. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, so I yeah, it's, I, I I just wanted to share that. I you know, that was uh, thank you because I've been sitting here wondering when he told me he's like I got to tell a story today on the podcast about this song, but uh, he said that just remind me. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't tell me the story. It's the first time I've ever heard it too. Yeah. So yeah. It's just, I, the song came on and that memory just, it, bam, it was right there. And I'm like, okay, remind me. I got to tell that story. I don't want to forget that one. Scratching a robot on his head. will make it say, do that to me one more time. <laughs> <laughs> so I forget where we were going after that. Where we're going to, it's going to be the hockey We were coming game, right? off of Ghostbusters. Yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Ghostbusters to nuclear power plants and, and now to Captain hockey. And- Captain and Tennille to Rocky to hockey. Rocky to hockey. hockey. There we go. Rocky That's a good hockey. segue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, when when Alabama dipped down into its Arctic temperatures, uh, Kevin, Jess, and I were at the Birmingham Bulls game. And holy smokes, it was cold. Ooh, it was cold. It was warmer in the arena than it was outside. Oh, mm-hmm. big time. Yeah. Big time. It was Star Wars night. And so uh, the three of us kind of have a tradition of going on Star Wars night together. And, um, so 
we went and uh unfortunately the bulls lost we didn't get queso we were in the section that was gonna get queso mm -hmm. uh from taco mac um if they scored four goals and they did not and that's yeah. that's fine yeah you and know, they didn't have a major Star Wars media anything to promote this year, so they're they're they you know they have a jersey every year, right? And I was kind of debating as to whether they were going to have one, but then when I got there, Jess was like, "Oh yeah, they posted it up, and it's got it, it had like a Darth Vader on the front of it." And it I mean, it was yeah. all right. Well, but compared was, to the previous jerseys, I didn't. This one wasn't as great to me as they mm -hmm. had in previous years. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, not at all. I mean, I, I kind of felt like I, I just about got my jersey. And I'm I'm okay now. <laughs> I, I look at I look at the new ones every year, but it's like you know I've got my Boba Fett jersey, so I'm like, that's well, that's the perfect one for you, thing, right? You know, so yeah, but yeah. yeah. And we but did was see. A, a, I'm right sorry, Bo, you missed out. We we did see a pretty good fight. That oh. I saw a very good fight. Yeah, I mean they were, they were kind just... of one. It was kind of one and a half though, right? Because we almost had another one that was further mm -hmm. further yeah. back. Yeah. yeah, but the one that broke out. That was a significant one. It was pretty good. They just kind of let him duke it out for a little while. They mm -hmm. let it go on longer than I've seen it go on before. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Well, the referees didn't want to get involved with that one. <laughs> there, there were hands flying. Yeah. Helmets off, hands. They're fifty cuffs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Woo. <laughs> wow. That T went down the wrong pipe. Do we? Do we mention that it was? It's been cold. I think a lot of us are coughing. So you know, <laughs> we, got, we got colds and things. Thank goodness it's not COVID. You know. So. Yeah. But speaking of cold, I mean, we were we were kind of chilly waiting outside uh, to get into the game. But then we got in, and they had the AC on. I mean, it's a hockey rink. What do you expect? But they turned it down, and so it was a little bit warmer. Uh, probably after the first period, and. It was comfortable, but mm -hmm. leaving. Oh, we were seeing <laughs> our breath. Yeah. I, I mean, we, yeah. Yeah. That was the yeah, most dramatic. Yeah, it's, it's, it's raised a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we, 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 as you step down coming out of the arena, it's like, it was like we were fine. And then you step down four steps and you start seeing your breath mm -hmm. when it should have been the other way around. <laughs> but it was, it was at the entrance, uh, the stairs that go, you know, you, you you turn left and you, then you go down the other stairs that goes out to the walkway around the outside of the arena. And we were warm until we got to that corner. Yes. And then you immediately took a left to go down and all of a sudden your breath just appeared and your bones chilled. That temperature difference within a matter of a foot was remarkable. Yeah. Well, and you know how, you know, friends, you like to embrace and have, hey, it's just, yeah. You know, it's been good seeing you. This was a fun night. We were all like, hey, see you okay, okay. See you later. All right, all right, I'll talk to you later. All right, bye. I'm going there to my car. No, <laughs> no. There were no Southern goodbyes involved. No, no with it's this, usually, with yeah, usually you hug, you talk for a few more minutes, and then you hug again, and then you leave. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, Kevin, turn around. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's hard. Quick hug. Bye. <laughs> it's hard to have Southern goodbyes in Northern weather. I see that. Yeah. That's good. That's now good. I know why Northerners don't have Southern goodbyes. There you go. Because yeah. it's like, yeah, well, we'll die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was incredibly cold, but uh, a lot of fun at the game. But whoo, man. Um, we got to see Doug Vincent, who's one of our other uh, Alabama GB members. He came over and said hi to us. We <laughs> we right. had we had seen him uh in one of the pictures he posted and we were going to go over and try to find him but the next thing you know we turn around and there he is hey he's right there he found <laughs> us <laughs> yeah yeah so always good to see doug doug's one of our doug is our newest member of the uh, alabama gb and so we uh good guy we really like him a lot um but uh so we went to hockey and uh as we mentioned uh during this frozen week we went to Jess and I took my kids to Montgomery to uh, Garrett Coliseum uh, to see the World Wrestling Entertainment, WWE. Uh, we did that on Saturday. Uh, SmackDown was, as we mentioned, in Atlanta on Friday. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because my kids live in Georgia, uh, my son was like, I could have... I could have been at SmackDown tonight. Is in Atlanta. <laughs> I'm like, only an hour away. I could have been there. Yeah, it's like, it's like, calm Whoa. down. You're going to go see him tomorrow. <laughs> you know, and yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are updates coming. Yeah, stay um, tuned. Stay tuned for that. So, uh, 
It's like, well, you're going to go see him tomorrow night. Well, we stood outside in line in that 20 degree weather Ooh. for an hour, uh, waiting to get into the building. Jess had her parka on. Yeah. Uh, she stayed relatively warm. Mm -hmm. uh, Except for my face. Yeah. That was okay. Uh, but once we got inside, uh, this was kind of a neat moment for me because my kids, this was their very first WWE event. My daughter does not watch wrestling, doesn't know a lot about it. My son is completely addicted to it. <laughs> um, this was their first event. And Garrett Coliseum is uh, the first building I ever went to a, a WWE event in. And that was 36, 37 years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so getting to take them to where uh, I got to see my first live event uh, back when Macho Man Randy Savage was there, Sensational Sherry, Hercules, Ultimate Warrior, they were all there. Uh, and my kids got to see Cody Rhodes and Jay Uso and Damian Priest and Becky Lynch. And it, it was a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I will say, uh Garrett Coliseum needs some work. <laughs> yeah, I saw that from some of the photos people were ooh. posting. I was like, ooh, I mean, I, I like some dated dated venues, but I think mm. it, it needs some facility upgrades. Yeah. Wooden, wooden yeah. seats, dude. Wooden ooh. seats. Yeah, the yeah. last time I was there, oddly <laughs> enough, was for a um it was for an event where they were demoing hot tubs. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, but, but, like star contrast from what you guys were, were, were there for but i mean that, that, that the, from the parking lot to the inside to, yeah it's kind of like it kind of has the feeling of like a 30 year old high school gym well they exactly have the, they yeah have the it, livestock over to the side too where they do the 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 front like mm -hmm. livestock shows and i guess you yeah. know what, mm -hmm. what are they what are those called i don't yeah <laughs> you know what i'm talking yeah. about yeah there's no I telling them montgomery yeah. Yeah. Got an auction. well i think they do the state fair there or they yeah. do some type of fair there so it involves you know with the livestock cows and everything so that's those barns are like off to the side of the coliseum i noticed that yeah and the the one the one really good thing though is there was free parking we didn't, yeah. have, to, we didn't have to pay to park <laughs> and I, right. i'm assuming that's because they paid off that building years ago and they don't have <laughs> a whole lot of ambition to refurbish it so yeah. they didn't need the money yeah. um <laughs> but yeah you're right it's like a 30 year old high school gym in that thing mm -hmm. um th what was nice though is the the if you're watching on youtube the cm punk shirt that that jess is wearing she bought that she bought that at that show what was really nice is they had the merch table in that bottom arena area off to the side they had the ring in the middle the mm -hmm. entrance on one end for the wrestlers to come in and then on the other end, they had the merch table. So yeah. she's standing in line to buy this T-shirt, and she can see the whole thing happen right there. Mm -hmm. She's not blocked oh, that's off. Awesome. Her... Yeah. yeah, yeah. So she she didn't miss anything. Yeah, if you had to go to merch, you weren't going to miss a thing. Yep. So yeah, you could see it right there. <laughs> but uh, it was a lot of fun. You know, uh, if you're if you're an active WWE viewer, you know Seth Rollins is uh, battling a knee injury at the moment, mm. and he was scheduled to be there and. Of course, he wasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, they advertised Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair, uh, Randy Orton. Randy Orton. Those were the, you know, they advertised Cody. Uh, they had one time advertised L.A. Knight, who is my son's favorite yeah, wrestler. Yeah, I, I was. Um, uh, L.A. was not there. Mm -hmm. Randy was not there. Rhea was not there. Seth, naturally. Bianca wasn't there. Bianca wasn't there. But. Uh, it, they had a really good card. AJ Styles and Solo Sokoa opened it up. Uh, Damian Priest and um, 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 Jay Uso did a Montgomery Street fight, which <laughs> I yelled out, <laughs> I wasn't fighting Montgomery Streets. Yeah. You get shot. Please um, tell me they wiped out, they had to whip out a chair. I mean, come on. A chair, I mean, a table, and kendo yeah. sticks. Yeah. yeah. But you got to be yeah. by the riverboat when you do that, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, they call it <laughs> you got to take it down know. to the docks. Do you know that I just now, rem I, it didn't clue into me at first until you just said that about the Montgomery fight. Yeah. No, yeah. That, that was, that had to be intentional. I hope. Oh, so. Yeah. Of course, everybody, you know, modern day wrestling crowds, you know, we want tables. You know, they're yeah. all this, the chant. Well, Damien being, <laughs> you know, the heel, the bad guy, uh, everybody started chanting and he reaches <laughs> reaches underneath the ring and starts pulling out a table and the crowd goes nuts and he shoved it back under and like ah, forget y'all yeah <laughs> you know? everybody started his, booing him doing his yeah. job excellently yeah yep. yeah we didn't get Rhea, but we did get uh dominic mysterio he mm -hmm. did run out during the street fight and and uh jay put him through the table so that yeah. was a lot of fun everybody enjoyed that um 
course uh who else was there you like you mentioned oscar and eo sky were there mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh kari Sane. kari Sane. Kyrie yeah. Sane. ah the pirate princess yes yep. yeah um right. i like her yeah i like her a lot she's it's got my second favorite elbow drop behind savage yes <laughs> she's good with it she does a beautiful elbow drop yeah um and who it was uh uh becky shotzi and uh Mi Chin. and me chin yeah that's, yeah took and over. that was a fun match it's mm -hmm. a six-woman tag match it was a, a lot of fun yeah uh who else am i missing uh omo uh, omos was <laughs> there. I, saw that, I was like i didn't know he still worked for them <laughs> he's doing house shows from what uh, i can uh, from what i gather he they've been putting him through the house shows yeah and so. mvp came out there with him and mm -hmm. had a stack of hundreds and like i give ten thousand dollars to anybody could take omos off his feet and of course akira tozawa <laughs> came out there if you know uh, if you don't know these wrestlers, you just look them up. Yeah, that's what Alyssa was doing. By yeah. the way, she was <laughs> she, she was googling every wrestler. <laughs> how, did out. Enjoy, how did she enjoy it? She loved it. She did. She loved. She it. had a good, She's like, I'm probably still not going to watch the TV shows because that's just not me. But she said live uh, events. This was fun. Mm -hmm. She uh she did say that she'll you know whenever SmackDown or whatever is on, she'll sit in here and eat dinner with us on Friday nights. Yeah. Um, while we watch a little bit, but she she'll she tends to watch a little bit then she'll disappear back to our bedroom and yeah. watch watch something that she enjoys but uh live shows she loves going to live shows mm -hmm. and seeing these things in person mm -hmm. and it was funny because david this is a christmas present that we got for for dave and for Alyssa. but uh david especially because he's <laughs> becoming so addicted to it that boy was living his best life last yes, night he was That's he was awesome. having, a, he he having was, a great time he That's was awesome. he was cheering and jumping up and course when cody rhodes came out oh man he jumped to his feet whoa i would say yeah you gotta start the big war yeah. yeah yeah um and chinsuke nakamura was cody's opponent they did a uh, uh bull rope bull rope match mm -hmm. which was of course invented and made famous by dusty rhodes mm -hmm. the american dream if you will <laughs> <laughs> high times baby mm -hmm. um but that was good uh ch -ch 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 -ch. am i missing anybody mm -hmm. It sounds about right because I looked at the card yeah. earlier. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Really wanted to see Rhea there because uh, we got to see her in Huntsville. Man, she puts on a show. Um, love Rhea. Yeah. But uh, we should see her down the road. Yeah. Down the road. Yeah. Should be. Yeah. And of course, as we mentioned earlier in the podcast, uh, Bo and I are going to go see AEW dynamite and collision when it comes to huntsville yep. on february 28th um sting who's a legend in the wrestling yep. business uh, he's the that, icon yeah yes <laughs> this will be his last network television appearance uh, his last because... appearance on like on the network that made him up made him the legend tnt mm -hmm. tbs i mean that's like once you once you uh, like i was like yeah i'm gonna get my tickets but then once you you told me that i was like you know what? I didn't consider that. That's 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 solidified. It. I gotta. <laughs> yep, we'll see him on Dynamite and Collision that like... week, and then uh, March second, uh, AEW Revolution, mm -hmm. uh, the pay per view that weekend. Following that show, he's retiring. That's that's I, it. The only thing I gotta take, prepare you for when we do go is be prepared. If Jericho shows up, I will be screaming, Ju singing Judas at the top of my lungs. I'm sorry. Well, you'll be screaming and singing Judas, and everybody else will be screaming NBAs. <laughs> I know. Hey, that's <laughs> all the other stuff going on. That's been one of the moments I've been wanting to experience live with AEW since mm. that's one of the things. Hey, I'll be singing with you. It's fine. Uh, yeah. It's, I, mean, I got yeah. I got the day off the next day, so we I'll I'll go horse. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. That's gonna know. be a lot of fun. I am. I'm really looking forward to it. Like I said, it's 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 scary. The only thing I'm very mad about, but this is also me being an old man, this thing is still like over a month away. And Ticketmaster still will not give me a physical ticket. I, my phone is my ticket. I do mm -hmm. not like yeah. this. I, I do not like either. this. As somebody who has many, yeah. many physical tickets on my wall, I wanted my AEW ticket to be a real physical ticket. What I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to print it out on cardstock and mm -hmm. put it up. But I'm like, that's that's my old man grumbling. I'm very not enthused about that. I've seen advertisements on Instagram that there, there's there are companies who will who will print out like old style Ticketmaster tickets for you. You just put in the information and they'll 
Yeah, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's just it's me being nostalgic and old. Like I, yeah, I want the ticket from the event, or you know, at least how I purchased it. I don't know. It's 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 me being stubborn. I mean, I yeah. know I'm an old man. My time has come, but you know, it's well. It's like for these shows, like WWE will they allow Ticketmaster to do souvenir tickets, but you got to pay fifteen bucks or so for a, a physical ticket, and it's uh... and it's just and it's just it's not even a physical ticket to get in you still got to get in with your phone but they just give you a souvenir ticket representing it it's kind of like eh. well, well that was like the last like when uh we went to see uh alice cooper and rob zombie i requested um i guess it's it's a cost-cutting measure but i requested physical tickets and they didn't even scan them they have like a uh they you tap them on the uh, uh the, uh, the key stall and that's how they let us in huh that, but that was bridgestone arena so i don't know it might that might depend on the venue yeah well, we did we did let them know that uh, the four of us will be going uh, with Kevin and his uh, lovely girlfriend to go see Monster Jam. Oh, nice! Uh, yeah, we did get tickets to that, and I we were sitting at Cracker Barrel in Prattville uh, before the show. <laughs> well, yeah. hey. no, 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 that might be the most Alabama thing we've said in this podcast. We were sitting at the Cracker Barrel in Prattville talking about how we're going to go to Monster Jam right before we go see the wrestling show. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> we went to Prattville. We went to Cracker Barrel. We're gonna go see the wrestling. Yeah. In a month we're gonna go see the monster truck. <laughs> well we were uh. we were sitting there. We're sitting there. We were sitting there eating our biscuits and, and cornbread. Yeah. And uh I looked yeah. over looked over at the kids. I'm like, we gotta get you guys some earplugs. And they're like, earplugs for what? And I went, Oh, do I go ahead and let you know? Yeah, I said uh we're going to, uh, Alyssa, of course first thing out of her mouth was we're going to go see nascar and i was like no we're not we're, we're not going to alabama it that much but then again we are yeah. um going to alabama it that much but yeah i said no we're going to go to monster jam and the look on my son's face <laughs> when he heard monster jam he goes oh yeah <laughs> his eyes got wide my son does not get overly excited about anything He's very low key and laid back, but his eyes lit up with Monster Jam. Yeah, <laughs> he's getting that's but awesome. he's getting excited over wrestling and Monster Jam. So that says a lot right now. See, yeah. he's now they, they they mentioned um, NASCAR. Now we got to go to NASCAR. Now we got just we got to do a NASCAR. We do. I haven't been to Talladega in years. Yeah. I've never years. been. Never have. I it's, have. I, ne I never have. And I, uh, without revealing a lot to my folks, I don't live incredibly far away from that either. Mm -hmm. so no, um, no you don't. yeah so i i do need to go I, i'd love to go with you guys and, and yeah. i know there's an amazing yeah. museum there as well on the history yeah. of nascar yeah the, so. the the international motorsports hall of fame is in talladega my dad's 1972 amc javelin uh alabama state trooper car was in that museum for years and uh has since been moved down to uh state trooper headquarters in montgomery so yeah cool. um yeah, I've been able to see my dad's car in there and everything else is really, really cool. The, the actual one he drove. Um, but you got to go to Montgomery now to see it. But yeah, uh, we'll we'll try to go to Talladega. I know October is a really good time to go to that to that race. Um, that's a fun race. I think it's April. April, yeah, April is the first April race. Of the year. One, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I tend to like. We'll see if we can uh, time it or we can get Bo to come with. Yeah. yeah, don't hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> you got to align those stars just right. Yeah, we'll check. And because uh, I definitely want to take my kids to to a NASCAR race. I mean, they're fun. I I don't follow NASCAR anymore like I used to. I don't but, even know who all the popular drivers are anymore, honestly. I mean, uh, retired yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's just, you know, you go around, go to the left or right or whichever way they go. And you go to go the to left. The left. And you go. Go to the left, yeah. go to the left, go to the left. And I mean, the whole reason you go there is to hear the cars go, rah, 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 you go by you like over and over again, you know, and the, the I, best, I the best thing in the world is when you're, is when you're sitting there watching the race and watching the cars go by is don't move your head. Just look straight at the infield toward down towards the bottom of the track. Mm -hmm. And when they go by it's yeah. I mean, you got 43 cars gone like that right in front of yeah, your eyes. Insane. It is stupid fast. It's 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 a really fun visual. Yeah, it's it's one of those things like you were talking about, like you were talking about drivers. I guess one thing I see, I don't think there's no characters anymore. All the 
Of course, that might be, you know, just because I'm not invested in it as like I used to be watching racing. Could be. I, I don't know any of the, I, I know very few of the drivers that are holdovers from when I watched it years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, I've been to a few NASCAR races. I've been to Talladega a few times, been to Atlanta. Um, what's really fun are the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, NHRA, the hot rod. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Multiple we went times. to went to one of those uh in dallas when i was stationed out in texas in the air force and uh man don't lean on the fence next to the next to that track because it will blow you backwards well that you, it, it's weird when a vehicle passes by and it rattles your insides that is a yes it's it's, a, it's, it's yeah my, a, my lungs were like blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a ton of fun though the nhra mm -hmm. races but yeah, coming 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 from a, uh, a huge fan and proponent of electric vehicles, I can honestly say that and Monster Jam are like two sports that I don't ever want to see get away from uh, internal <laughs> combustion engines because yeah. that's part of the allure. It's the same as could you imagine going to a Monster Jam where everything was electric? <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably wouldn't need earplugs. No, yeah, it would be like you're gonna, you're gonna yeah, it jumped and you would hear every creak and groan yeah. and everything from the suspension. You'd be like. This just doesn't sound great. It sounds like my grandpa. This is Tyco <laughs> RC on steroids. Yes. <laughs> so there's just some things that just need to stay the same. Yeah. In, in that sense. So. Yeah, you would um, definitely have some civil conversations quietly in the crowd with that. Yeah. Yeah. Is, it, oh, yeah, is, sure. is this is this race uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, monster jam is at the stadium, correct? Not inside. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be the first Good time deal. they're going to do it protective stadium, so it's going to be outside, but. You know, uh, my daughter was like, yeah, yeah, I got my noise canceling earphones. And I said, well, bring them I just mean, in case. And but we're yeah. still going to bring you the, the earplugs. If they do it in Legacy Arena, if you get uh, if you get tickets high enough in the in the auditorium, you can you can also get a buzz off of, <laughs> off of all the fumes coming off I, of the thing. <laughs> I can attest to that because <laughs> last time I went was just kind of like on a whim. Uh, me and a friend of mine, we just decided to go. And yeah when we got when we got there to get tickets we didn't have tickets ahead of time we showed up um yeah we were almost at the top of the of mm. the arena so yeah i can i can attest to oh, that yeah. i can tell you that's true so I and mean, this will be the first time that i've, I've seen it outdoors so i'm what, curious what? to know the how it's going to affect you know I've, I've been used to seeing it inside the arena so this is the first time for me to see it outdoors they'll get to do more stuff because like i said the the port the the bjcc slash legacy arena was just it was just a little not mm -hmm. big enough for them to get really crazy in them. They could do some stuff, but I think like now you got a full football field. That's going to be, yeah, mm -hmm. they'll, be, they'll do some stuff like you see. I mean, I've, I've watched the world championships. They had it on. Uh, I think they do that in Vegas, their football field out there. And that, and they do some impressive stuff with that. Yeah. There, there's a guy from Wales that we watch uh, named, named Simon Wilson on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And he was doing that. And I may have mentioned this prior, but he was doing uh USA monopoly. And mm -hmm. wherever he rolled the dice is, is where he went. He would pack up and travel and he went out to AT&T stadium in Dallas. Nice. And, and he, while he was, on, while he was in the car, uh, in the Uber heading to the stadium, mm -hmm. he was like, so was, what's going on there tonight? And so he's looking on his phone. He's like monster Jim, I don't know what that is yeah. you know, he's from Wales <laughs> has no clue. And he gets there. He gets there and he walks inside and gets a seat and he's like, Oh, monster drugs and nachos. I love America. You know, <laughs> this is the most American it. thing I could ever do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh me. Well, especially if you go to Waffle house beforehand, you know, mm -hmm. and then <laughs> you sit around talking about wrestling or yeah. cracker barrel. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. But yeah, my, yeah, David's face lit up big time whenever we, when I told him about Monster Jam, and he's just like, "Man, I'm getting wrestling, I'm getting Monster Jam, and Dad's treat awesome. me right." <laughs> at the beginning of 2024, you know, I see a lot of people when the new year turned over, is like, "Oh, great!" You know, 2023 was such a kick in the head. Hopefully, this year is going to be better. My my son's living his best life. <laughs> <laughs> teenage, teenage boy doing all getting the checklist. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, and I love being able to take him to these things. I yeah, I made sure I sat next to him last night um, mm -hmm. at uh, at the WWE event because. He loves wrestling so much now and being his first event. That's awesome. I, I enjoyed watching him as much as I enjoyed watching the wrestling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what, that's what we do when you get the older, you know, you're, mm -hmm. you're yeah. You, and he had, yeah. he had such a good time. I was, I was telling his mom today, 
It's like make sure you, you you get every detail you can out of him because he, he doesn't he's not very expressive. Um, he, like how was it? Good, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so much yeah. fun. So like, much fun. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, drag it out of him. Mm-hmm. He he had a good time. Yeah, he really did. So, uh, but outside of all that, Kevin, yeah. Kevin, man, you 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 took a highway highway trip. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about yeah. That. Yeah, um, so, you know, as I was kind of alluding to earlier, um, when it got cold, thankfully I had a trip planned and I just escaped to Florida. It's the first time I've been down to um, the commercial mecca that is Orlando um, in probably about 20 years. Um, it's, it's been it's been quite a while for me. Last time I went, I was Ooh. in my teenage years. And uh, yeah. I can tell you that the commercial heartbeat of America is currently alive and kicking. And thriving in the town of Orlando. Yes, it um, is. Yeah, it's uh, and, and you know, I know Brock, you and Jess, you 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 routinely go down and go to Disney mm-hmm. and whatnot. Did not get to go to Disney, like the actual park this time. Um, my my primary goal with this trip was we had a short, bit of a shorter trip, so I wanted to go to Universal because I specifically wanted to go and see, um, you know, the uh, Wizarding World Park. Mm-hmm. I was looking for that specifically. Um, and I, I should have been more prepared for this, but I can show you guys some some really cool pictures um, that I took there, if I can get them pulled up. But, um, you know, Universal Studios, obviously a park, it's got like that, you know, a million things. But, um, you know, uh, we got there and pretty much went directly to um, uh, Hogsmeade. Um, that was mm-hmm. the first park that I did. Um, I've got a medical condition um, that kind of prevents me from riding a lot of intense rides because it mm-hmm. can cause me some issues. I didn't get to ride two. I got to ride the the Hagrid's um, motorbike thing uh, that was nice. I forget the, the full name of it, mm-hmm. but I got to ride that while I was in Hogsmeade. And I got when I was in Diagon Alley, I got to ride the Gringotts Escape from Gringotts, Ooh. which oh, wasn't too, which was which was great. Yes. Um. Uh. My girlfriend got to ride the majority of the other ones, and she was able to tell me about them. But at that point, I was like, I, it's no way. She she would ride it, and she's like, no, no. You you don't you don't need to do that. That's just like just turns you upside down and all. And I'm like, yeah, no, it's probably probably a bit much for me. I love roller coasters. Don't get me wrong. I just can't do them. I've yeah. got the issue. I got the uh, inner inner issue. Yeah. Um, but um, did did you get to go and uh, do the ride that's inside uh, Hogwarts? Yeah, I would say you probably could have done yeah. that one. That wasn't too violent. Is, is, are you talking you talking about the roller coaster? No, no, it wasn't a roller coaster. No, no, it's in, in Hogwarts. Um. Uh, in the actual castle, yeah. yeah. That... She told me that Hawkins? was one that that she went on that one because the thing I'm... delayed and broke down, and oh. she was like, "Yeah, it's probably not because it's, she said it was like a real harky jerky." Um, uh, kind of. It's, it's 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 a lot like uh, it's a lot like, like Gringotts. If you could have handled Gringotts, you could have handled missing it. it. <laughs> Huh? If you could, I already feel bad enough. But you could have handled it if you handled Gringotts. Yeah, because yeah. I've heard that. Well, okay, the Hagrid's right. motorbike was is is like as anyway uh, again without without going too far into details with this because obviously it is a private medical condition it's not about the intensity it's about Uh, how often i do it um, that could cause me problems so i had to basically pick and choose what i wanted to do i knew i wanted to do those rides so i did those rides okay um the biggest thing for me was um uh, when i go to theme parks it's i'm strange that, that, that i've gotten to the point where now I look more more forward to like the the shows, mm-hmm. uh, the shows that they do, and the shops, and just the experiences and the details that they put in the park. And yeah. Universal did a phenomenal job with they this, did. maintaining it. I will say the only thing that I was disappointed with at Hogsmeade was, um, you know, they did the best they could with Hogwarts Castle, mm-hmm. but it's still pretty obvious that it's small. <laughs> oh yeah, because it's basically up against yeah. a, a highway. Like right behind it, it's like right up against the highway. So they they basically ran out of room to put anything behind it, you know. So I get it, and I got some some pretty good photos of me up against it, and it looks phenomenal. But you know, when you get up close, even when you're a little further away, you're like, the perspective is great on that, but it's still tiny. Mm-hmm. I can tell, you know. So there's only so much you can do with that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, overall, you know, the, the, the escape from Green Gods with the with you know the dragon is on the top and it erupts like every thirty mm-hmm. minutes or whatever. That was you know I knew that was coming, but if you're under it and when it happens, you're like whoa, whoa. yeah. yeah. What, the, awesome. what the heck was that, man? Because you start hearing it making the noise and all of a sudden you get this big burst of heat 
yeah. from whatever direction that you happen to be standing. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, the, you know, overall, we, we it was like we we crammed this into one day, and I know it's, it's Ooh. usually enough for room Ooh. to be able to do multiple. <laughs> yeah, it was tough. It was a lot of walking that day. I think I did uh, about eight miles worth of walking mm-hmm. that day, and doing all that. But we you know we did the two parks, so we went to um, with the Diagon Alley. Diagon Alley, I can live there. I can That's still awesome, be there. Yeah. That's my place. Is mm-hmm. it I mean I loved Hogsmeade. Don't get me wrong, it was great. But Hogsmeade, it kind of felt like just a park to me. But when I went to Diagon Alley, I felt like I was there. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. and it and it's most likely due to the fact that you everything you're surrounded by is is Harry Potter. It's all mm-hmm. you know, there's you you look no matter where you look. And then uh, Nocturne Alley, there was like my favorite place that I've been in any park ever. Because I, I kept going back there, like, you know, there's only one, uh, the, uh, was it Bur- Borg and Burks that's down yeah. in, in mm-hmm. Nocturne Alley? Yeah. There's mm-hmm. only one shop down there, but just going down there and just how well they reproduced it, yep. um, just kind of blew my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, every shop that was there was uh, was phenomenal. Uh, the only thing I could say that was probably the criticism is that a lot of their merchandise is kind of generic and reproduced across stores. Mm-hmm. I was kind of hoping to see a little more variety. But what they did have, you know, I was able to find things that I wanted, shirts and, and whatnot. I mean, this is one of the ones I'm wearing right now. It says Butterbeer on it right here. So, <laughs> Speaking um, of, did, did you have the Butterbeer? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, of course, me being me, um, I go to the shop that sells the Butterbeer. You know, they got the actual shop yeah. that, that actually you can go get Butterbeer. I'm like, ah, okay, you probably get this question about a thousand times a day. But can I take the fire whiskey and put it in the Butterbeer? And the guy's like, we can't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, it's copyright or something. I forget it was like, it was trademarked or something that mm-hmm. the, the, the recipe is that we can't do that. He's like, and we, and we can't sell them apart knowing that you were going to put them together because then, you know, they could be, you could be expelled from the park. And I'm like, okay, so what can I put with the fire whiskey? So they let me have strong bow with the fire whiskey. And that was actually pretty good. But I'm like, you know what? I need to make some butter beer. And then get some like fireball or something like that, and then put with it because I really want to see what that tastes like. Because tasting that in the park, because if you've ever had the the butter beer that you can get in the in the bottles, they mm-hmm. put like a metric ton of sugar in that in right. the bottles. It's so bad, and it, it doesn't taste the same. But the, what they have at the park, that's mm-hmm. lighter, and it tastes good. Like I had the um, I had the non dairy version, um, and the non dairy version seems to be foamier than what yeah. you could get with the dairy version of it. Um, but you know, they, they have the different varieties the the frozen version, yeah. the, um, kind of had a little bit of all of that and ate at the three broomsticks. I would say, did you stop there? That's mm. yeah. Food. Yeah. It took, took, them, took them like 35 minutes to get our food out, but it was, you know, it was all right. They were busy. It was, it was kind of crazy. Um, mm. overall, I mean, the park itself is just gorgeous. And I mean, the, the, the big deal is, and I'll, I'll see if I can grab you guys a picture and keep talking in the meanwhile, but did, did you have a chocolate frog? Yes. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can present this really quick. You're not do any uh dare dead air time here, any. Um, but where have we got photos? There we go. Yeah, okay. Let me do that there. Sorry guys. Should be more prepared. Um allow. All right. And so just kind of give you guys an idea. Um uh, as you can cool. see, I'm in costume. I didn't I mean Bulgaria. It, any anybody that knows me knows that I'm not just gonna go and just be like, oh, I'm just gonna be anybody. No, I took my um, I took my professional uh, Quidditch World Cup robes there. Um, I had um two people ask me where they could buy them, <laughs> and I, I literally I didn't wear the armor and stuff because that would have been too much. So I just wore the robes and the and the goggles. And I actually I've got to download it. I haven't downloaded them yet, but um. I have a, a picture of me on the Hagrid ride where I'm actually wearing the goggles. Mm. Oh, nice. <laughs> I actually wore the goggles on the Hagrid nice. ride. So I've got to, I've got to get that and download that picture. Um, but it was really fun. And in, and those robes, you would think, why would you be wearing robes? It's like, you know, it's hot. Those are like, the, those are basically like uh, um raincoat fabric. They don't weigh anything and it, and it doesn't, it's not hot at all. Um, so yeah, I wore those all day. Mm-hmm. And, and people were enjoying it. I, I was walking around Universal in the Simpsons Park, and people were like, "Oh wow, Quidditch!" So yeah. people, you know, people recognize it everywhere. So, mm-hmm. um, 
but yeah, overall, I mean, um, it was a it was a phenomenal experience. I really enjoyed it. Um, would definitely want to go back. I'm really looking forward to when they open the new park because mm-hmm. they're going to be adding another Wizarding World park to the the new. Uh, what is it? It's not Icon Epic. Is it Epic Universal Epic? I think or Icon. I forget what they're calling I, it, but they're they're, they're building a there. brand new park that's going to incorporate the Super Nintendo Land, mm-hmm. um, and then some okay. other stuff. They're going to build. They're going to be building into it, but. Uh, they're uh, yeah, they're going to be adding on. I think they're the Wizarding World. They're going to be adding on the Paris location. Uh, okay, building up Paris. So no buttons or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. So that I mean, it'll be another reason to go, and then of course it'll be a separate park with a separate park admission, which you know, ching ching ching, and you know, adding up those mm-hmm. those mm-hmm. dollars, you know. But um, the only the other place that I went was Disney Springs. I didn't get a chance to go to the formally to Disneyland or you know mm-hmm. Disney World. Um, I went to Disney Springs. Disney Springs. That place is incredible. Yeah, it we is. went and saw the uh, the primary reason we went was to see the um, uh, what's it called uh, um, the Drawn to Life, the Cirque du Soleil show that they have there. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I saw that. Um, that was phenomenal. Yeah. That's the that is the best Cirque du Soleil show I've ever seen, and I've seen some in Vegas. This blows that out of the water. They, that that was that's something. If you've never seen it before, if you go back, that's something to see. It's it it, go, it kind of goes through. The evolution of how um, Disney drawing occurred uh, kind of follows the the story of a child um, inheriting her drawing ability from her father, and then how she's having to discover how to how to draw, and then how to deal with rejection, and how to deal with failure, and things like that. And it's got a cool a cool Ursula like villain in it, um, and it's it's. It's really fun. I, I very, very, very much recommend it if you if you go to Disney and you go to Disney Springs. You know, Disney Springs. I didn't realize you park for free. They don't they don't charge you for yeah. parking. You just park yeah. on one of yep. the decks, mm-hmm. and then there's you can go see the Star Wars outpost and and all kinds of uh, yeah. all kinds of places there. It's like it's super fun. You know, oddly enough, one of the most interesting shops that I saw there, Love Pop, the company that makes the um the the pop up cards. They have a store. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. Blew my mind. I, and of course, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I love those. I have bought, I've probably bought a dozen of those cards over the years. And the fact that they had a store and they have, uh, they even had some newer cards that I've never seen before where um, they have mm-hmm. like stuffed animals that when they open up, there's stuffed animals mm-hmm. on the inside of them that I'd never seen before. So I guess um, you didn't make it inside the Lego store because, you know, I did. Like, oh, you did. Okay, yes. cool. How was the oh, yeah. then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it, that, I had a picture on my profile. I don't know if you saw it, Jess, but where we're actually in front of this. Uh, well, yeah, um, yeah, I saw that. I just I didn't know if y'all made it inside the store because usually, like every time we usually. go, there's usually a heck of a line to get it in. It took a it took about three minutes to get in. There that's was a bad. line, but oh, okay. it was it was very very fast. Well, and you gotta keep, so, keep in mind, I'm in the, this is the off season too. So so I, I have to know since you went to the Lego store, did you see the cake? Hmm. Did, did you see Chewbacca's backside mm-hmm. on that? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah. 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 It, they, I did. they gave him a, a nice bit of cake on the, the Lego statue. That's cake. Dude, that was an impressive statue, though. Yeah, I mean. it was. <laughs> and it was the funny thing was, was I was, you know, walking around there and I'm like, somebody needs to tell Disney that Legoland is leaking. <laughs> it's like there's like you think they get you know, tons of I mean, like the dragon with, you know, the, the dragon they have off to the side where it's mm-hmm. fighting the, the knight. Mm-hmm. And it looks exactly like one of the nights from when I was a kid on horseback. That was just, that's super yeah. cool. Disney Springs is, is incredible. So mm-hmm. is. I'm really looking forward to being able to go to Disney with the next trip, which I'm kind of hoping maybe I'll be able to do next year. But I was absolutely satisfied with the trip this time, just going to Universal, mm-hmm. because that was the primary reason I wanted to go. Because big Harry Potter fan, obviously. Yeah. Um, wanted to go and see, uh, uh, I wanted to go and see, you know what, what the Wizarding World was about, and mm-hmm. did not leave disappointed no. in any way. That's an amazing park, and you know I've heard people throw shade on Universal Studios and like how their members and how their cast works. I had They're no bad. problem with any of them. We, um, you know, without going into much detail, some of the rides we had some sizing trouble um, on some of the rides um, for um, uh, you know for getting on the rides, and the the, the cast themselves were. We're really nice about it. They, you know, they, they they would accommodate and they'd be like, "Are you comfortable? You know, mm-hmm. try doing this to sit down." And then, you know, "Are you comfortable? Are you good to go?" That they were 
it really surprised me because I've always heard like you know oh my god yeah yeah you go to Disney and it's it's all sunshine and rain sunshine and rainbows then you go to Universal Studios and they're a little more edge you know on the edge and not not as, as nice and so I go in there you know after not having been there for twenty years and I'm half expecting to like be at Six Flags you know where they're like mm-hmm. well you can't you you can't get on it get out you know we don't care where you know the, these guys were they, they were incredibly accommodating and nice so yeah you know kudos to universal studios that that was a very very nice experience yeah we we've always had uh, uh good dealings with with universal absolutely love universal as much as we love disney we just mm-hmm. just don't make it over there as often as we do to to disney but mm-hmm. um the last time we went of course was for our honeymoon um back in uh we went in spring of 2019 and um we had bought vip uh passes for the day Mm -hmm. and we got to go um sorry if i looked distracted i was (laughs) there was a car sitting in our yard for a second and i was like okay move along (laughs) um it's gone now uh anyway we had bought vip passes i think it's like an extra 200 bucks per ticket Mm -hmm. But they feed you for the day. You get immediate access to every ride. And yeah, we we rode what fourteen rides mm-hmm. that day, and then when you're when you're done with the VIP tour, um, it they, works and, as a fast pass. Yeah, it works as their fast pass for the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. So it was oh man, it was yeah. absolutely phenomenal. Um, this, but if, if you can't ride a lot of the rides, it may not be worth it. Mm-hmm. But um, oh, I you, did the fast pass anyway. It mm-hmm. still helped out, and I mean, uh, my girlfriend got to ride mm-hmm. a, a rides a lot faster. I mean, she was, I think she was, uh, w- first time we went on the hot the, the ride that was in Hogwarts, the one that you queue mm-hmm. up to go into Hogwarts, that mm-hmm. that the the coaster. Um, she, uh, it got delayed. We got about halfway in there, and we got basically where the fat lady is, um, in the in the line in the queue. We got stuck at her, and we were we were there for like. 20 minutes mm-hmm. and we're like there's there's something going on here this is this should be moving a lot faster because i looked it up and the way the ride works is it's just kind of a constant go 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 yeah. go they keep it going and um so we, we got out of the line and went and, and went and ate and then came back and when she when we came back i decided okay look i'm i'm feeling kind of weird i don't think i'm gonna be able to do it she said i'm gonna do it anyway like, okay cool well, that's, that's that's perfectly fine mm-hmm. let's get the, let's get your money money's worth out of it by the time she got in. She left and got in line. By the time I got over and I and I just kind of settled down, she was done. Yeah, she did. She was she like was through the line. Like I yeah. think the whole thing, the whole experience, took her twelve minutes from the line yeah. through the thing and then out. Yeah. Did Did you get a wand? Yeah, I already have one, so I didn't need one. No. Okay. Yeah. There, I know there's that they sell there. You you can go through mm-hmm. and interact with a bunch of exhibits mm-hmm. and all. Yeah, I saw. I, I was I was content seeing other people doing it because when I would sit down like to eat or whatever, you mm-hmm. know, they had the, the the big umbrella that the water comes off of, yeah. and then they got some of the interactivity with windows and things. I was watching, and I was perfectly fine with that. That okay. was the but one it, thing I have wanted when we went was that that was going to be my souvenir. Was I went through the wand uh, selection of the wands and everything. Yeah. Selecting mm-hmm. my wand. I did go through the Ollivanders and I did mm-hmm. see him do it. The you know the, the actor do the selection and yeah and mm-hmm. pull somebody out of the crowd and whatnot. That was actually kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that was like you know like a five minute thing that you queue up for. And then you know I was kind of like I want to see this and we got about halfway through the line and we were like you know we could just go next door. And they just look at the wants because, mm-hmm. you know, all they do is they do the demo and then they just yeah. send you next door to buy them. Right. You yeah. Know? Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, if you if you've ever been kind of if you're a huge Harry Potter fan and, you know, obviously, if you're a huge Harry Potter fan, you've either already mm-hmm. went or you're trying to figure out how to go. It's great. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a big fan. I love it. Um, definitely recommend it. I didn't really have any. I don't really have anything negative to say about it. Mm-hmm. The, the entire experience was. Pretty much as I would expect it. I'm really looking forward to them adding the the Paris Park, though. Yeah. Although that's going to be it's going to be interesting since I think isn't a lot of that pulled from Fantastic Beasts. Mm, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Think so probably, and, yeah, and, and Fantastic Beasts just kind of flittered out there. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. After a, you know a couple of uh, of movies, but <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes. We got the you know the Harry Potter show, the TV show coming up here pretty soon, where they're going to be doing some reimagining or or i don't know how that's going to work out i'm I'm really i am i am blissfully ignorant on the the plot of that show i, I don't want to know uh, i just want to watch it and be amazed but uh yeah but yeah um 
highly recommend it if you ever, um, you know, I mean, obviously if you're watching this and you're hearing me jaw on about it, um, you're probably interested. Definitely go. I mean, from, um, from, you know, somebody who's, who's been wanting to go for years, highly recommend it. Nice. Well, good, man. Glad, uh, glad you had a, a good, uh, experience down there with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, was, it was, it was fun. Okay. The drive back wasn't fun. But <laughs> that's, that's fun. Although with a, it, it's a bit of a different experience with a, with an EV because, you know, you know, EVs are a bit of a different experience driving anyway, because you, yeah, instead of like, I'm going to gas this thing up and get, get as far as I can and then stop for like X minutes and, and do, you know, go visit the facilities and, and fuel up and just keep going. It's a little bit more of a go a little ways, stop rest go a little way stop rest kind of thing with with evs it's a bit of a different experience it can be kind of frustrating for folks that don't know so the drive home while it was long doesn't feel that long it's because mm-hmm. it, you get a lot more resting in between a lot more being able to get out and stretch your legs and you're not you know hold up in the car for a long time but yeah yeah um that's one of the reasons that i, I, I literally i was telling these guys when at the time we're recording it um, when we started recording this evening, I had been home for an hour and a half after driving home from Orlando this morning. So, um, yeah, I just wish, you know, I think, I think it's the same thing that these guys would probably echo. Just wish it was closer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that would be nice. Yeah. Going over Thanksgiving down to uh, Orlando, it was definitely an eye opening. Yeah, I, I had not driven that distance <laughs> in a long time to Orlando and it's like, we're going to fly next time. Yeah. We're going to save our money and we're going to fly. <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's a, from, from, uh, Birmingham Shuttlesworth airport to Orlando is exactly an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Wow. But, but, yeah. From, <laughs> from the time you walk into the air, well, from the time you leave the gate, to the time you arrive hour and a half mm-hmm. as opposed to 12 in the car. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But having the car down there was nice. You know, you had the freedom to get out and mm-hmm. you know, go about, mm-hmm. but, um, well, we, 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 the primary reason I drove down, we would have flown, but the primary reason I drove down was we actually went to St. Augustine first, okay. um, before we went there and, and, uh, cause we were, mm-hmm. we just needed to kill some time because of the way that our hotels were laid out and, mm-hmm. uh, um, went to the St. Augustine lighthouse. That was fun. You know, if you've nice. never seen that lighthouse, it's, it's gorgeous. I love uh, you better you better you better be ready to if you want to walk up that thing you better be ready because it's 14 stories Ooh. um it's uh it's a it's a haul to go up that thing but it's a the view at the top is beautiful if you're nice want to do it there but uh, um that's a that's a fantastic park that's that city i mean it's one, it's one of the it's the oldest city it's the oldest established city in the country yeah they're they're you know they've been around for a very long time and they got a lot of you know U.S. monuments there. A lot, just a lot of history. Pretty much, it's kind of like it's almost like an old. It's kind of like a, a Disney, uh, uh, of like a park in a way. Because everywhere you turn, there's like something that's got detail. There's something that's like this happened here. There's this historical thing that happened here because the th- the place has been around longer than anywhere anywhere else in the country mm-hmm. with recorded history. So it's yeah, cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. very cool. I'm glad you guys made it back safely and had a good time. Yeah. Um, I know we're, we're getting down to the end of the episode right now. Is there anything else you wanted to touch on? Well, I mean, one, one thing I did mention, I don't know if you want to go into this bow. I know we talked about this just a little bit, but, um, you know, uh, Dr. Who you know, season 15, uh, <clears throat> it's going to be premiering this year. Um, and, uh, you know, um, uh, Kuti Gatwa, who is the new, um, doctor um he's his companion is millie gibson and, and a lot of people that have big doctor who fans have probably seen the intro episode where we get uh you know, we get to finally get to see millie we get to see the uh, the sparks and just the the the, the stage presence this the, the, the just the chemistry between her and cootie gatwa um we just re- recently announced that she was only going to be in for a season which is kind of disappointing you know, there there have been other companions before that have only lasted a season, no. but the way she looks and the way she acts, it's kind of like they were making her out to be another Rose hmm. who's going to be around for a couple of seasons, you know, like two, three, whatever. Um, but she's going to be replaced 
with, and I forget her name, uh, uh, Varada Sethu, um, who was, um, she was in Andor. She is one of the rebels in Andor. She's She's been on a lot more stuff than that, but that's kind of what I know her from because I'm a huge fan of Star Wars Andor. Um, but she's going to be taking her place uh, sometime in the whatever their whatever season it is that's going to be the next season after this one that we're going to be seeing this year because they're, they're, they always film a season ahead. Um, so that's going to be an interesting turn of events that we're only going to have this new companion for one season. Hmm. hmm. Yeah, I, I thought I saw things. She's really young. She's only like nineteen, twenty. She's wow. Really, I think I saw. I, yeah, things. yeah. She is. Yeah, she is. In, she's incredibly. It, but for her age, she is. I mean, granted, obviously, you know, we have child actors that are incredible and can outact some adults. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, the, <laughs> the fact that the fact that she can stand her own and still be, um, still be seen on screen next to Kudigawa, who is. Larger than life stage presence. I mean, he's almost like a front man. He's mm. incredible. Um, that she can hold her own and uh, and actually, you know, be fifty fifty with him. That's huge. Um, so I'm just, I'm just, let's just say I'll, I'll be enjoying the time that we have with her. I guess um, I don't, you know, don't, we don't, we'll probably never find out what happened there. I mean, maybe, yeah, you, know, you never know. Could have been wanting more money. Could have yeah. been, you know, creative you know, differences. All that. Yeah, creative differences. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, that's probably the answer we'll get if we get anything at all. So that's going to be an interesting, uh, mm. interesting turn of events. Um, was cool. was kind of hoping to have Millie Gibson on mm -hmm. for a little bit longer, but uh, you know, seeing as we uh, haven't even seen the season yet, it could be that it's horrible. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe she wasn't working out. But well, I, uh, I, I couldn't well, see that happening based on the episode we got for her intro. If 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 the rest of the episodes are like that, there's no way it's going to be bad. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see if this episode and your prediction age as well. Yep. <laughs> so, well, uh, anything else you guys want to touch on before we call it a uh, call it an evening? Mm, Nothing no. for me. Well, okay. just like I told you guys in our chat, I ca I'm playing catch up on movies and stuff. I watched uh, Into the Spider Verse, which was very very mm -hmm. good. Finally. And, uh, oh, the wife and I, we started watching. We only watched the first four or five episodes, but only Murders in the Building, the Steve Martin, mm -hmm. Martin Short. Martin, yeah. Film. That's that's a very fun show. If you haven't watched it yet, give it a chance. Like, uh, I only watched, we only watched, like, the first four or five, and then we went to sleep. But, like, I'm oh, digging the new it. new season, or are y'all just starting to In watch general, it? the new, just started watching it. Okay. Because okay. I've seen the first two seasons. But, it's I, uh, surprisingly enough, I haven't started the newest one, the one that just released on yeah. Hulu, and I don't know something about it. it's not grabbing me as I, of yet. But I understand that. I understand that. Yeah, yeah like uh, it was, it was much, it was much more serious than I was expecting with it being mm -hmm. Steve Martin, Martin Short. I was yeah. expecting a little bit more silliness, but I'm liking what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, beyond that, that's that's me. Bad grilling. That's that's about it. I have <laughs> midlife I'm grilling. Yeah, I cooked a couple of steaks and some chicken and stuff. I'm still perfecting my art before I introduce it to everybody. <laughs> <yet, so. laughs> well, we look forward to uh, your perfection by springtime, sir. Yes. You have a deadline. Yes. <laughs> will, that is that is the plan. All right. I'm planning on that Bama Geeks cookout that's at right. some point when the weather gets warmer. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the episode and just catching up with us and everything that we've been up to and sharing our stories. And uh, if you want to follow us on social media, again, at Bama Geeks on Instagram, X, Facebook. I got it right that time, hopefully. <laughs> Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. <laughs> That's where you find this episode. And, of course, uh, the Bama Geeks Front Porch on Facebook. That's where we share a bunch of stuff with our friends and family and people we might not know but we'd love to get to know you come <laughs> yeah. sit sit a spell with us on the front porch and mm -hmm. of course if you want some bonus content usually about a half hour or so uh with our uh, patreon members patreon.com slash bama geeks that's where we uh just talk about things that uh we normally wouldn't touch on the on the normal episode so 
What that is, who knows? It varies from episode to episode, just like everything else. We just, whatever pops into our brains. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, we hope you've enjoyed it and uh, we'll wrap it up and see you again in a couple of weeks mm -hmm. for my wife, Jess and Kevin and Bo. I'm Brock. We're the Bama Geeks. And uh, always remember. Um, do it to me again. Do that to me one more again. Do that to me one more time. Do that to me one more time. No, I, I was thinking, you know, like everybody has like a, a send off, like Casey Kasem had to keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars or something like that. Um, see you at the nut house. Yeah, see. <laughs> <laughs> Stay classy. Oh, I know what it was. It was from from our. Uh, 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 we stopped uh, at, at Target today. I was going to say, don't use your, don't talk on the phone in the public toilet. Oh, okay. There you go. So, just wanted to pass. Was somebody that. doing that? Oh, he was loud. Too. Oh man. Okay. I walked in. And don't and don't listen to videos and stuff because if you're going to do that, then you might as well like put yeah. it up under the stall and show me too if you're going to do it. Yeah. yeah. Sure. You're going to make me listen to it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I went into the men's room and some guy, he's just having all kinds of conversations. I'm like, don't do that in public. Here, yeah. yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, there you go. Don't use your, don't, don't talk on the phone in a public toilet. That's, <laughs> that's how I'm ending this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Life advice. Y'all have a good one. We'll see you in episode 73. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks guys.